Good morning, dear students. Today we will begin with a new history lesson, chapter number three, Applied History. So far, we have studied about historiography and various ideologies by various historians. Today, we will see how history can be applied or used in the present day. I want all of you all to have your textbooks open. Page number 15, Chapter 3, Applied History. Let's begin. What do you mean by applied history? Applied history is also known as public history. Why public history? Because it is open to all people to study. A lot of people have the misconception that history is meant only for people who want to pursue more about history. All right. But in this lesson, we are going to see how history can be used even by us common people and how we can apply history in our daily lives. Applied history is a field of study concerned with the application of history for the benefit of people in the contemporary and future times. Contemporary in the present times. How it is beneficial for us to have knowledge of history of the past. We all know that we uh, you know, have to go ahead in our times. If we are facing various problems, we have to look back into the past and see what those problems are what caused those problems and also if we are still facing it in the present, what are the various steps that we need to take in order to make sure that we don't face these problems again in the future. Knowledge of history is useful as it can provide guidance in finding solutions in contemporary social issues and incorporate them in the social planning. So when we are planning for a society, various steps, various bills, uh, maybe certain uh, resolutions that the government has to pass for the welfare of people. It has to be done based on previous knowledge. What has happened in the past? Did people suffer because of certain uh, bills and rights that were given out to the people? If yes, then what changes need to be made so that the future of the country do not suffer? Knowledge of history is essential for this purpose. The projects and programs related to applied history can create opportunities for people to participate along with technical experts. You know that when we study about history, the need of an expert is felt. Why? Because they are the ones who can uh, learn how to manage certain documents. If it has to be given into the hands of a common man, maybe we will destroy those documents which are very ancient. So a person who is an expert in these fields can help us to give us more information as to how to preserve various historical monuments, structures, so that it can be useful even for the future. Their participation in the capacity of tourists visiting museums and ancient sites is also important. If we want to know more about the past, we go to various institutions, organizations, like museums, okay, where we get to know, we get to see the ancient heritage and culture that we have. Tourism creates interest in history amongst people. Whenever you go to a different country or if you're going to a different part of the country, we get to see various historical monuments. You want to go and see forts or palaces of ancient kings. Why do we do this? So that we get to learn more about what happened in the past. Whether the king was good, what was his administration, were the people happy under the king? They can volunteer to participate in the conservation and preservation projects of their own city or town or village. So if in case in a particular town or city, we do find that there are historical monuments present, what is the job or duty of the people towards those monuments? Now we know that in Pune we have the Shaniwarwada fort. Yes or no? It is a historical site and how people have learned to over time conserve and protect it. Okay, so it's very important that we as citizens of the country also play our role in the preservation and conservation of historical value. Now there's this small little uh, box given to you. It is interesting to know public history. I've just explained to you what public history is, but we'll read through it again. 
people have a lot of misgivings misgivings misconceptions wrong idea about the practicality of the knowledge of history many of you all might feel why we need to study history it's not important but when we study history we will realize how important it is in our daily life if you want to move forward in life you have to learn about the past okay for example history is usually thought as a field of interest only for historians people who want to become historians only they have to pursue history and students wishing to pursue higher studies in the subject and not pertaining to practical life some people have the idea that history cannot be used in practical life history as a field of knowledge does not have any applicability to economically productive fields economically productive fields it feels where you can make money like if you are a doctor or you're an engineer you know that once you finish studying you're going to make a lot of money but if people believe that if you're going to become a historian then you will not make money which is a completely wrong idea to have public history helps to overcome such misgivings and makes history meaningful in everyday life connecting people to history so this public history becomes easier for people to understand how we can use history in our daily life there are many universities abroad where various courses in public history are offered Srishti Universe Institute of Art Design and Technology is an institute at Bengaluru Karnataka this institute has an independent department named Center for Public History so in order to create more interest amongst the people regarding the subject of history there is a special department that is given a name only for public history where people can come and learn more about history this department has taken up various projects and research in the field of public history let's move ahead applied history and research in various fields history is about the past events we already know this why do we study history to study about what happens in the past the way our present lifestyle is shaped is dependent on the historical chain of events we are a product of what happened in the past okay so whatever wars were fought whatever battles conflicts bills that were signed we are in the present or we are facing whatever situation we are in the present because of what happened in the past historical events relate to various fields like politics social and religious structure of a community philosophy technology and science whatever has happened in the past in all these fields we are a product of that past okay so whatever happens in science whatever happens in technology today we can, we are able to use smartphones we are able to use wifi and all of those various uh, you know uh, kind of abilities that we have today okay so it is possible for us only because of what happened in the past people have learned to create or discover new inventions uh, you know so so that man's life becomes more easy becomes more comfortable each of these fields have their own history of building knowledge the direction of future development in every field is dependent on the state of available knowledge so we can move forward in the field of maybe science and technology in philosophy only because we can base present knowledge on what happened in the past if someone has to create maybe further technology for example now we know that cell phones were uh, it's it's a new development in society all right in the past people did not have a means of communication so over time how man has evolved from the past to the present we need to have that previous knowledge hence the method of history can prove to be of value in research of various fields if we need to find out what happened in the past history becomes a major subject where we can learn about what happened in the past what we are facing in the present and how we can solve those in the future they have given us various fields of how we can use history the first one is philosophy 
Now we've already studied about what philosophy is. It is nothing but ideas and thoughts of man. So the history of philosophy helps in understanding the origin of various ideologies. Ideologies, thinking of man. The intellectual traditions giving rise to those ideologies and their historical development. So over time, how man has changed his thinking as well. We learnt in the previous lessons how in history, man used to always think that God was the centre of society. All right, But later on, people began to challenge this ideology and what happened was man became the center his life his feelings his work all of that became the center so how did this transition take place we will understand only with the help of history philosophy needs language as a medium of expression if man wants to express himself he has to use language yes or no only then will he be able to speak to write and to communicate his feelings to us Thus, in order to understand these philosophical expressions, knowledge of history of languages also proves useful. For us to understand more about what these philosophers wanted to convey to us, okay, we have to understand various languages as well. Next, we come to science. The history of science helps in understanding the chronological order of scientific discoveries. We all know that there are various discoveries, inventions that have made man's life so much more easier. But when we study the history of science, everything is given in a chronological order. Chronological order meaning in a sequence. All right, Which event took place after what? The inventions as well as theories. It can also help to understand the cause-effect chain that led to those discoveries and inventions. So what was the reason that this had to be invented and how it has helped man in his uh, work or to make life of man more easier. For example, if in the olden days there was no electricity, people would always light candles in the house. Okay, But then man realized that it was becoming very difficult for man to use those candles so then slowly how the invention of electricity came into being all right as well as the light bulb so all of these things tell us about how man has made the life of the future generation so much more easier because of the cause and effect relation it is said that need is the mother of inventions all of you all have already heard about this very famous proverb the need is the mother of inventions. If you don't need it, you don't need anything to be invented. But the minute the need arises in man, we need to make life more easier, then man begins to think of what are the various ways he can do certain things in order to make life much more comfortable, much more easier. Scientific discoveries, inventions are often the effect of human efforts to fulfill a need and also curiosity. Man is very curious. He always wants to know more and more. And in order to fulfill this curiosity, he has more and more inventions. But before that, there is also research that takes place. Why do we face certain problems and how we can solve them? These efforts are based on already available scientific knowledge. We've already spoken of this. We need to know about the past so that we can solve the problems in the future. Knowledge of history of science helps in understanding the factors that facilitated a scientific discovery, invention and also its chronology. So therefore, in order to understand various discoveries, various inventions, we need to have the knowledge of history. Next we come to technology. The history of technology helps in understanding the changes and their causes in the field of agricultural production, commodity production, architecture, engineering etc. Now what does this mean? Now in the past we all know that agriculture is the major occupation okay, of India. But in the past, how did agriculture take place? What were the tools that were used by man in order to make sure that agricultural production was on a rise? In the beginning, people would use uh, maybe cattle to plow the field. Now man has invented certain easy machines. You have the tractor, you have machines that would till the land. Okay, So all of these have helped 
to make the life of man so much more easier now we would understand this only with the help of the knowledge of history okay so we have changes that have occurred in all these fields in fields of agricultural production and commodity production commodity production also in the beginning we see how man used to use his hand in order to make certain things but now machines are being made so that production is increased and with increase in production what happens man can sell those products more in the society or in the market and therefore earn a major profit scientific discoveries inventions and technological advancements are mutually dependent on each other with scientific discoveries when man invents certain things what happens there is advancement in technology so we are progressing in order to make the life of man so much more easier knowledge of science and technology are very important at every step from the making of stone tools to agricultural production in the evolution of man so we know that early man okay stone age man used to use stone tools but now later on stone tools or weapons but now we see the various kinds of tools the various kinds of weapons that man has invented and created so as to make whatever um, you know work that needed to be done maybe a a stone knife which was used earlier now you have knives made out of various kinds of metals so that it becomes easier for man to cut through things all right so this transition that has taken place this change that has taken place is very important for us to realize how man has progressed from its past later the advancement of science promoted the mechanization of production mechanization the use of machines in order to make more and more products so that more profit comes in it is necessary to know the history of technology in order to understand the development of mechanization and mutual dependence between science and technology so we know that with advancement in science there is advancement in technology as well so how they are interrelated and because of that there is advancement in mechanization mechanization in the production process where production is increased man can sell more in the market gain more profits and this is how this is a cycle next we come to industry and commerce the field of mutual social transactions expands with the growth of industry and trade now we know that in the beginning we need to have trade relations yes or no trade relations between countries trade relations between uh, within the country as well within states so what happens is there is more and more social transactions that take place people from various parts of the country come to big cities in order to get jobs yes or no so we interact with those people therefore this mutual social interaction keeps on increasing it also pro promotes continuous development of the network of cultural transactions i've already told you that people from various parts of the country come to uh, you know big cities in order to get jobs and when they come they bring along their culture along with them so we are introduced to new cultures we are introduced to new people new thinking it is an integral part of the industrial and commercial management now it is very important for the transactions to take place because there is give and take of knowledge as well all right and that helps in developing the commercial management as well as industrial management it is essential to understand the history of these processes we need to understand from the past what kind of management or what kind of industries existed what is the commerce that was there the nature of the market and commerce has continued to change you know that in the beginning we had barter system okay where things were exchanged for things but later on we see that now india is trading with so many various countries okay as well as we don't exchange things anymore okay the monetary system has come into existence so how over time there has been a change in the market accordingly the nature of human relations and social organizations also has continued to change so over time how countries that maybe 
in the past were at war now because of trade and commerce how they have started to have friendly relations because each one is dependent on one another to understand this development it is necessary to study the history of cultural social organizations and economic institutions for us to have a further grasping about how industry has developed how commerce has developed we need to study about cultural history about social organizations in the past how people used to stay in uh, joint family systems now we see nuclear families all right people are moving away from their families to go abroad and work so how all that has an effect on human life as well as economic institutions when we are talking about economic institutions like factories companies banks we need to have a thorough understanding about the past and how we can make problem uh, we can make changes for the future next we come to management studies in order to understand various factors involved in the chain of production such as means of production human resources and processes of production as well as the chain of market and sales management it is essential to have knowledge of similar functional systems of the past now here anything to do with management suppose you want to start a business of your own okay or a factory of your own how at various levels management should be taken care of is very very important all right so what suppose if uh, you're talking about a farmer okay his means of production will be the land that he uses the seeds that he uses the cattle that he will have on the land along with him okay then you have human resources human resources the people that are working on the land land laborers all right as well as the process of production how is the process taking place is the farmer using machines to make his life more easier or is he still using it by hand or using ancient tools all this needs to be understood in order to make management more easier it is essential to understand the psychological character of people working at various levels in the chain of production and marketing for healthy management now you know that when you are a businessman you have to deal with people at all levels okay starting from suppose if you are uh, talking about a farmer all right he has to grow certain crops from there you have transportation of those crops to other people who are going to buy those crops from them okay wholesalers from there you have people who are going to distribute it to retailers when we go and purchase those vegetables and things so what we are going to see is the various stages that are required in the process of management and how we need to deal with them so the kind of language that we have each one has a different psychological character okay so when you're talking about the labor class or if you're talking about a workers class or maybe the laborers that are working all right we need to make sure that their psychological well being is also taken care of pay them good wages all right to give them certain insurances to make sure that they are happy because once they work your profit also will increase knowledge of history in this regard makes the management at various levels very easy so if we have a proper understanding of this of how we need to deal with various people at different levels the management becomes much more easier at all various levels next we come to arts it is important to understand the development of various art forms what are various art forms like paintings you have music you have sculpture all these are various kinds of art forms and with the help of their style of expression and their foundation in the form of intellectual emotional cultural traditions how it helps to intellectually expand your knowledge about history how we need to understand or emotionally connect with the artist when an artist is portraying his painting all right what were the emotions and feelings that ran through the artist's mind all of this needs to be taken care of when we study about art history the key to expressions in any art form emotional temperament of the artist and the developmental history of the respective art form can be understood with the help of cultural history now we know that in india we have one very popular tribal art that is the varli painting 
all right so it becomes a cultural tradition for us where we are to associate ourselves and we we are more fond of it so we when we go to see in the museums and everything all right how it becomes part of us we are identifying ourselves as indians because of that tribal art so we need to understand how history plays an important role for us to understand art to protect art and to preserve and conserve it even for the future we come to our next topic that is humanities humanities is nothing but social sciences okay study of social sciences humanities include disciplines disciplines subjects like history archaeology you already know what archaeology is digging of past remains and study over it Soci sociology is nothing but the study of society anthropology is the study of human societies human behaviors political science study of politics economics study of the economy so all of these various subjects become part of humanities to understand the history of the origin and development of these disciplines is an essential part of learning each of these subjects has an origin who started it why was it started and how it has benefited people from there we need to understand this only with the help of history all disciplines are supposed to have their origin in philosophy we've already studied about this how philosophy played an important role ancient people all over the world try to speculate speculate try to understand in order to uh, understand the relationship between the universe and human existence remember when we spoke about philosophy and how people thought that god was the center of society all right that everything that happened happened because of certain magical forces or some divine uh, divine uh, intervention in between all right but later on how people began to challenge this ideology and say that no man is the center and his feelings and his occupations should be considered as important it gave rise to various mythological stories about the origin of the world the universal order human life gods and goddesses rituals and their philosophical explanations mythological stories are nothing but stories that are made up fictional stories all right and how people used to talk about how the universe was created and various gods and goddesses and you had to perform certain rituals in order to gain god's favor all right but later on like i said people began to challenge these ideologies various disciplines under humanities have theoretical foundations theoretical only based on theory no practical knowledge or no practical uh, work was done in order to prove these various theories only historical knowledge can help us in understanding these developmental stages so for us to understand more about history and these mythological stories and the creation of the universe and philosophy it is important for us to go back in time and study about history we come to the next topic that is applied history and our present now we get to see that how history can be applied in our present day lives okay is it important why should people study about it people often ask the practical value of history people always think that if you study history there's no practical uh, value to it you're not going to make a lot of money but the answer to this question about the nature of applied history answers this question as well the visible and invisible relics of the past relics remains of the past exist in the present we get to see whatever was left back by our ancestors by people who lived in the past we nurture some kind of curiosity attraction towards them i told you man is very curious all right and he wants to know more and more about something so therefore when we have various historical monuments palaces forts people want to know what happened over here what is the uh, value that this place has we wish to know more about their history because they represent the creative thoughts and traditions of our ancestors ancestors are forefathers all right people who are from the past it tells us more about what their life was in the past and therefore since man is curious we need to do more and more research if it does have 
a historical value then how as citizens we have to protect and conserve it for the future generations because it is our heritage something that is left back for us to protect it helps in building our identity okay so when we talk about the taj mahal as one of the seven wonders of the world we feel very proud why because it belongs to india and as indians we take pride in that so it becomes our identity the history of our heritage links us with our origin hence it becomes necessary to preserve and conserve it for the future for our benefit as well as the benefit of future generations so we know that in order for us to keep our heritage alive to keep our identity true we have to make sure that we preserve and conserve various historical monuments things that have historical value applied history is concerned is concerned with the preservation and conservation of our heritage and make it accessible to people accessible easy for people to see people to meet heritage management creates opportunities of employment okay so because of this because we have to ma- manage or protect or conserve heritage people become uh, you know you have these tourist guides you have people in the museums who are there for uh, you know if a painting is destroyed then you have some expert who comes in to restore it okay in brief applied history can be described as an understanding of our present with the help of history and finding the right direction for the benefit of our future so when you have or when you study about applied history applied history like public history all right we come to know what happened in the past we get a better and clear understanding so that we can use those points for our present as well as move in the right direction for the future all right so with this children we come to the end of part 1 i hope that you all have understood all that i have explained so far please read through the lesson till here if you have doubts please free, feel free to mention it in the comments below thank you and have a wonderful day